so welcome to a Burrows and Badgers uh, terrain build. Um, so I'm not going to profess to be as good as uh, good friend Tim at Magrafeer Builder at Worlds, but um, yeah, I want some more terrain uh, for my Burrows and Badgers game. Plus, I've got a big tournament coming up soon. Um, so uh, yeah, we need some more terrain basically. So uh, first thing I want to do, uh, get some three mil hardboard which I've done an outline of my um, terrain that I'm going to build today, uh, which, yeah, I, mean, I don't know quite who's going to live there. Um, I can imagine um, any of the foxes or whatever. Uh, but effectively, some of the great places you can find terrain is uh, the likes of um, Maidenhead Aquatics, Dobbies, places like that. So again, if you're not into uh, building too much terrain, for example, something like this, 15 quid, it's kind of like a Saxon hovel. It's got some holes in it, obviously for fish to go through, but literally 15 quid, don't paint it. You don't have to do anything with it. You can literally just plonk it down. So, I mean, obviously that's one option, uh, but also it is a great place to find other things to inspire you. So, what have I got here? I've got a reptile cave. Can't remember how much this was. I think it was Pets at Home, this one. So, yeah, they do uh, four different sizes of reptile cave, and that's basically going to be the, the basis of our hill. So, it's going to sit on the board like that. And then what I'm thinking is we'll do a little fence and a little path and that kind of thing and sort of burrows it up a bit. So um, that's where we're at so far. So uh, on to uh, putting the path in um, and various other bits. So uh, I'll show you that now. So um, back of a cornflake box basically. And we have a path. Okay, so that's going to be the path that leads up to so that's just uh, glued down with some PVA, okay, and then uh, we'll fill in the gaps with some sand and grit and whatnot, okay. So that's the uh, that's going to be the path. What I'm thinking, um, sort of, what we'll probably do um, is have a sort of walled garden here, whether that be of stone or uh, a privet fence. Not sure yet with vegetable plot, um, so that uh, get some food. Um, and then at the, the back section here, maybe a big bush uh, or tree maybe. And then just have this area here as a kind of a, a lawn or just a bit of wasteland. Okay, that's the thinking there. Uh, I'm gonna put some barrels and bits of bobs around, really dress it. Uh, what I'm thinking for the, um, for the top, of, uh, top of the mound, uh, basically we're gonna use obviously the contour of this, which is lovely. Um, I think it's probably going to be dug into, you know, maybe have all of this front area here exposed as stone and then the, the back section kind of as a grassed over area across the back. But obviously the front being exposed, not sure yet, we'll see how that goes. Um, equally not sure whether to leave it as a cave entrance or actually to form a porch um, on that, uh, see, see how that goes really. That's the, that's the thing, you get an idea and just sort of run with it and see how it goes. So um, yeah, just wait for that PVA to go off um, and uh, start planning uh, the, the next stage. Okay, so uh, progress so far. Um, I've used a wood drill just to put some holes in for my fence posts. I've used matchsticks and obviously make sure uh, they're used. I got a little gate from War Bases, so shout out to War Bases. I think there's two for 50p or something like that. A little five bar gate. So the plan will be to trim the matchsticks down to a suitable height um, over here. Um, this was originally on a round base, uh, which I've just trimmed off a little bit at the moment. Uh, but it's a 3D printed um, objective marker, I think, from I think Alex Storch did them, uh, Warhammer. Um, but anyway, so just think about plan, maybe have uh, some bits there. Uh, ignore the Magpul front sight for those that uh, know their guns. Uh, so just wait for all that to dry off. Uh, then the next step will be basically to f fill out the um, fill out the garden area. Um, probably put some f polyfiller down first to act as the beds. 
Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what I'm going to do there just yet. Um, and that's that's where we're at. So uh, so far, it's taken about ten minutes or so. And uh, uh, sun's finally out as well. It's only old Hinkley. So there we go. Right. Let's see you at the next stage. Okay, so we've now uh, added a, a chimney, which is uh, just sitting in place there, gluing on. Um, that's going to sit there. Subsequently what we'll do, put a coping stone above it, and then a couple of upturned drawing pins, or cork pins, to be the chimney pots, I think. Um, Pretty much all I can do at this stage, just waiting for everything to sort of go off. Um, tomorrow's job will be the trim the fence posts and obviously put the fencing in, uh, work out what we need to do in the allotment. Um, then it will need a PVA coat. Still not sure whether to put a anything over the cave entrance or not. Uh, have a think on that. Uh, and that's where we are. Okay, so here we are, progress report. We've got Millie put down for the flower beds. Uh, this is just your standard um, grey and it's green, I think it's Millie put. Uh, matchstick fence, so obviously remember to uh, light them first and put them out. Otherwise you could have an entire fiery fence on your hands. Uh, super glued in place, uh, Gorilla glue the uprights and then super glue the cross beams. Uh, as we said, the five bar gate from war bases. And then what we've done, we've just put some um, basing material down. Just give us a bit of uh, bit of uh, base there, just so that when we do uh, spray. So what I'm going to do a PVA coat, obviously all of that bit, before we apply the uh, black spray. And then from there we can dry brush all of that up and then fill in the, the flock after that. Uh, I've got quite a nice tree actually um, that's going to sort of sit in the corner. So we'll show you what that's all going to look like or the plan um, as we put the, uh, the building back in place. Okay, so here we have uh, a tree which is from Backman. It's a um, H scale uh, tree which actually works quite well in my opinion. Uh, we put the... Uh, reptile cave back in and we've got the chimney breast which has got a uh, piece of card cut to shape to be the coping slate on the top and then we've got two um, cork board tacks uh, which will be the chimney pots so uh, they're going to be there um, so uh, yeah we're not far off ready for uh, some spray and uh, we'll go from there uh, actually let's just uh, pop a Pop a model on there for some scale relevance. Okay, um, and then we've got a beaver as well. So this is the massive uh, scale. So again, works okay with everything we have planned so far, etc. Okay, so that's where we're at. Okay, so here we have the main um, house itself, which is uh, been sprayed black so um, obviously we had to um, PVA the chimney breast as it was made out of uh, polystyrene or XPS foam and uh, just seal that so we sprayed it with Chaos Black from Games Workshop uh, we've then given it a heavy dry brush of Morn Fang and the next one I'm going to do is Dawn Stone Okay, so uh, let's just uh, pop that on, and again, we're going to go fairly heavy on this because um, this is one of, well, this is the second of potentially three or four different colours we're going to put on to onto this. Um, in order to give you the various gradients of natural stone. Okay. Okay, so there we have it all finished. 
Uh, one thing uh, I have noticed is obviously we've got the uh, branding of uh, these bits which we covered at a later stage so we didn't bother um, sort of filling those uh, the idea being this back section going up to probably here will be covered with turf um, I think uh, hobbit hole type thing just with the frontage being probably exposed so I have done the whole lot only because I might actually leave where there's a recess here for example uh, I might well leave that as exposed rock um, see, how, see how it all sort of pans out um, so there we have it okay so that's that stage uh, the next colour after that will be Zandu dust and then the final one will probably be Carrick stone so uh, yep we'll uh, show you what that looks like in a bit Okay, so the next colour we're going to go with is uh, Zandri Dust. And this will lighten it up uh, quite a bit. So the important thing when doing rocks obviously is to give it quite a bit of variation in colouring. Um, uh, very rare that you'll just see a grey rock in its natural habitat. So I'm going to leave the chimney as stonework would have been cleared of obviously any mud, detritus, etc. And then what we're going to do, once that's all dry, we'll give it a wash with probably Agrax or a brown wash. And that will go into all the recesses and then we'll hit it with a Carrack stone over the top of that. And then that will be ready for um, the grass to be added. So here we are with the wash uh, drying, um, so not much more I can do currently. Um, I've just done a PVA and Warm Fang Brown mix over the top of the core base. Uh, we super glued the tree um, base in place, so uh, that's going to effectively sit, sit there. Okay. That's what it's going to kind of look like. Um, that's all gone off, so that's all good. Uh, so we're going to basically uh, stir the mud or battlefield mire, I can't remember which one it is, um, around here. Uh, do all of that. Paint the <coughs> fencing. Another coat on the main building, and then do the floor. So the floor will be flagstones, will be uh, effectively a grey. So what we'll do, we'll basically hit this again with a uh, a darker brown, probably dryad bark initially, and then uh, build that up a little bit, and again do that first. Then we'll put the stones in, so the stones will sit proud of that. Uh, then we we'll, we can start the last stage, which is really just sort of flocking and putting all the the vegetable bits in and making everything look pretty. So uh, not far off now. Uh, so the next stage will be coming up. Okay, so. Uh, 
to progress on the Burrows and Badgers build. Uh, what we've done, I think, since last update, uh, obviously we had a wash applied. Uh, we've then gone over with uh, Games Workshop's Carrack Stone on a dry brush again, just to sort of knock it back a little bit, really. We've added some resin supplies. We've got three bags of potatoes, a box and a barrel. The flagstones have been painted with Dawnstone, which we'll then have an Agrax wash over those. We've used Sterling Battle Mire, I think it is, uh, basically to put the, the basing down on the ground, which includes the beds. Uh, I've just got the fences to do. Um, the base, which will just undercoat actually, let that dry off. Uh, so yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. Then we get the fun bit, making it look pretty. Okay, so uh, here we are, uh, progress report. We've put some tufts down, uh, given the fencing, just a quick lick of Zandri dust. Um, started on the potato bags. Again, just giving a dry brush to the woodwork there. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna apply some uh, base ready. Um, now, uh, it has uh, obviously occurred to me that uh, this also could easily be a hobbit hole for Lord of the Rings. Um, so again, same principle applies really, although I'm gonna burrow it up a little bit probably. Um, so the next step is gonna use some Geek Gaming Scenics, which is available obviously from Geek Gaming. Also from our own website, blackdragonminiatures.com. Uh, this is the base ready Tiger Hillside, or ta Tiger, Tiger, I don't know, Hillside. Um, now, the advantage of that is we can just basically lather it on. Uh, it's ready to go, it's ready mixed. And uh, for my Burroughs miniatures, I use that quite a bit because it's quite a nice, gives you the contrast of a bit of uh, stone and uh, rock and grass. So we're gonna do that on most of that. So we'll do that now. Okay, so uh, just uh, using PVA, well in actual fact this is Mod Podge, which is a type of PVA, just a quite a thicker version of it, so I quite like using this. because easier I want to make sure this has a good opportunity to dry with the PVA first or clearing it off Okay, so uh, that's it pre-shaken. Okay, so we've got a quick shake off. This is where we're at. Okay, so progress after the flock has been applied. Hartley there just to give us some element of scale. Uh, so we're still going to uh, populate the allotment. Um, work our way around. Okay, so um, yeah, a little bit of progress. We've done a little sign there. Obviously, the owner of this. Uh, uh, cave needs some help and uh, just doing a few chores so he's looking for some unskilled labor uh, loads of these are on the burrows and badgers facebook page so if you go to the file section uh, there's a couple of pages uh, of them 
and uh, you can obviously just cut them to shape. So again, big cut, um, glued onto the back of a cornflakes box and using up right matchstick. Easy peasy signpost. So let's have a little look in there. Again, leaving the uh, allotment till last. Again, a little bit more colour onto the uh, barrel or the barrel and the box in there, just to give a bit of a contrast with the with the wood. And uh, here comes Sahali. So again, you can be positioned anywhere around uh, the tree. I think I had mentioned is uh, an H and N level tree. Uh, I think they're two for 30 pound, but again, they are decent size. And there we have it so far. Okay, so with the final touches, we are finished, and this is the finished article. Um, in order to put the vegetable garden together, we basically just um, drilled little holes, and then we used um, this product, which is TP. Um, the height of these, these are apple saplings, they're one and th uh, three eighths of an inch, one and three eighths. Um, obviously a bit of random measurements when it comes to railway stuff um, but yeah so there we have it okay so the uh, in detail view we have uh, a hedgehog apothecary or mage from Burrows and Badgers right, like Oversaw Miniatures which is fundamentally what this game is designed for however obviously if we, uh, we don't even need to remove uh, this um, we can still use it as a hobbit hole quite easily for Lord of the Rings or any other dwelling from a fantasy setting that you see fit. Um, so let's have a quick scoot around. Tree, chimney, I'll just turn it around. I've got a helicopter flying over, but it's such a lovely day to be inside. Uh, we've got the uh, sort of a hole there for any uh, detritus to come out of the dwelling, so you can draw the hole. Also plenty of room for playable aspects, so people can climb over the house and attack and whatever they want to do. So there we have it. So, um, really total cost of the build, and uh, this one was relatively expensive but saved a lot of time. Um, about £15 from Pets at Home. It's a, um, I think, a gecko or bearded dragon cave, reptile cave, I think it's actually called. Um, it's about 15, anywhere between 15 and 25 pounds, depending on size. Um, the trees, uh, model railway shop, uh, I think it was two for 30 quid, so I've got another one, so 15 pounds there. So we're at about 30 pounds there. Um, the vegetables, uh, again, probably the next biggest expense is gonna be a tenner's worth. Um, I was thinking about anywhere between seven and ten pound a pack, but obviously I've not used the whole pack. So overall cost about thirty-five pound probably, because uh, all the rest of it is just what's hanging around. So there we have it. So I hope you enjoyed that, and if you do, put some comments down below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.